Hey y'all, so our paint is dried and they are fully sealed and we are ready to glue them to the top. While I was waiting for the paint to dry, I went ahead and attached the fabric bits that I wanted to it. I sewed them on. I normally do just a stay stitch because then I glue the beads on top of it, but because I didn't know if I was going to use beads or not on this top, I went ahead and sewed it with the sewing machine. So I attached the fabric. I have two layers of fabric here. And I added the ruffle detail to the edge of the arms. And then once everything's glued on, then I'll go ahead and rough it up a little bit more to do the final touches after we're all glued. So let's go ahead and glue our shells on. I have to figure out how we molded them so I can glue them on the right sides. We will go ahead and start with this side. And you can just put the E6000 on. That's fine. Because the backs are shiny, I like to rough up the back of the shells just a little bit. You can use an X-Acto knife to do this and just score the back here and there. I have this tool. I'm not 100% sure what it's for. It's got a sharp blade on it. I think it might have been for glass, but it roughs it up real nice with minimal effort. So once that's roughed up, I use E6000. I have a bucket that I've been using and go heavy on this. Do a lot and then do a little bit more. So I actually purchased the bigger buckets of E6000 to make this process go a little bit faster. And for some reason, I found it to be much more liquid than the little, than these ones that are hard to get the stuff out. And so it would, it was too liquidy to where it would drip down and ruin the tops. I don't know if I just got a bad batch or what was going on, but I haven't had much luck with the larger tubes of the E6000. So you're just gonna go cover the whole shell and just keep going. This is gonna take a minute, so I'll fast forward this part. Okay. For this size shell, I used about half a tube. I don't know if you can see, but it's all on there. And we'll go ahead and we'll place it where I think it should go. And I have these fabric clips for when you're cutting fabric. They work really well for me for the tops because they're small enough to get in but they're big enough to hold it into place and then I also have large rubber bands to hold on to the bottom so we'll go ahead and we'll glue the other side and then I'll show you what it looks like while it's drying all right so we have both the shells glued on I'll probably leave this for about 24 hours before I remove any of the rubber bands just to make sure that my glue is fully set and dried. And then while the glue's drying, I'm gonna figure out how I wanna finish up this top. I have some of this ruffle left over and I might go around just to make the transition from the shells. Or I might go ahead and do beadwork. I haven't decided yet. I will finish it up, rough it up a little bit. I've been using this wire brush for these spooky tops to kind of rough up the fabric edges to give them a little, a little spooky vibe to them. And then I'll go in with some fabric paints and kind of dirty it up a bit, make it look a little more spooky. And then we'll call this one done. 
here's our finished spooky top, a Pennywise inspired top. Thank you so much for creating a spooky top with me and I can't wait to see what y'all create. Thanks again, guys.